Okay, um, so I'm um, talk here is about a uh, status update on flat packs in Fedora. My name is Owen Taylor, I work at Red Hat. I'm the architect for our desktop team. I've worked on almost every piece of the desktop, but uh, this has been my project for the last year or two to really try to improve our flat pack story in Fedora. So uh, the project I'm gonna talk about is um, building flat packs and flat pack runtimes from Fedora RPMs on Fedora infrastructure. So that's sort of saying it's, it's a subset of the bigger flat pack problem. Um, as if you were in the last talk, you, you probably heard about the sort of different ways of using flat packs and building them, you know, building flat packs directly from source, using um, flat hub to put your flat packs on. I'm looking more particularly at um, building flat packs within the Fedora structure and using the RPM um, pipeline. So just so everybody's clear on what a flat pack is, um, you know, the most basic idea is that you have your operating system and then you separate your graphical applications out and so they can be updated separately from the operating system. And so that optionally you can add sandboxing there. Their your graphical applications are in containers. And Flatpak additionally has the idea of a runtime, which is the idea that some set of libraries can also be put into a, an image, but then shared between mobile applications so that updates to those, app those libraries are shared between all the applications and they don't have to, every application doesn't have to du duplicate its own copy of GLBC, which is what you would see in the classic server-side container world. Um, so, so I said, so we're building flat packs and runtimes from, you know, from Fedora RPMs. So why do we want to do this? Why don't we just want to build everything from source? Um, well, you know, one reason is we wanted to make even more flat packs available. If you went up to FlatHub today, you'd see about 450 applications there, which is a lot, you might say, but Fedora has about 1,000 graphical applications into it. So we'd like to harvest some of those Fedora applications, which might be old applications, might be applications that nobody wants to put into FlatHub, and get them into the set of flat packs for everybody to use. We also want the ability to ship a version of Fedora, um, in particular Fedora Silverblue, which is an image-based um, version of Fedora, which only has applications as flat packs, and have a big set of flat packs available for that, even if without the user having to go out um, and explore, find FlatHub, find other places to get flat packs from. So we'll say these are you know, out of the box Fedora software in flat packs. And then the final thing is that um, Fedora already has a lot of um, infrastructure for checking licenses, for, um, for tracking security problems, and building software in a, in a way that people trust. So if we can extend that to um, the flat packs we're creating, and particularly the runtimes we're creating, then that gives an advantage. You know, people may find, say, this is a more appealing set of flat packs for me to use. So those are some of the reasons why we're you know, engaged in, the, in this exercise, to build flat packs this way. And you know, a, third, a fourth reason is not really a reason much for much for users, but for me as a developer, is that you know, what we're doing in Fedora is always um, you know, has an eye on what we're going to do in RHEL later, and we, some of these infrastructure that we're building out here, some of the ways we're doing it, are things we are planning to reuse when building software for, for RHEL. Um, so, again, sort of reviewing what a flatback looks like. If, when a flatback's running, it has its own file system namespace, and there are a couple of different directories there that, that come from different sources in that namespace. The slash app directory is where you have the application itself and any um, libraries that are bundled in that application. It's the flatback image. The slash user and slash Etsy, on the other hand, come from the runtime, the set of shared libraries. And then you might have other directories like slash home or slash dev, which can come from the running system. But that depends a little bit on what kind of sandboxing you have set up. If you don't have visibility to the user's home, then you won't have, home will not be the system home directory. Um, so it, with a Fedora flat pack, this, app, this um, slash app directory is made up of Fedora packages, but since they're located in slash app, we actually have to rebuild them because standard Fedora packages are going to have a prefix of slash user, and we have to actually rebuild the source code to change where they're located. 
The runtime, on the other hand, is made up of absolutely standard Fedora packages, just the same ones that are in, um, you would install in a normal Fedora. <coughs> so we rebuild the packages we're in a bundle. We use um, Fedora modularity for that, Fedora modularity being a way of being able to handle different sets of packages within Fedora in a very structured fashion. We take those and we use the, the Fedora container build service to build uh, an OCI image. So basically a Docker, a sort of evolution of the Docker format. And we, look at, uh, we do that with the Fedora container build service. And then we distribute via the Fedora container registry. So both this, um, in terms of how, what we're building and how we're distributing it, we're trying to stick very close to how Fedora handles containers. And this is to try to keep any um, sort of unnecessary, unnecessary separation happening between what we're doing for containers on the server side and what we're doing for containers on the desktop side. So, so what's the status of this? Well, it's as I think I had a talk here last year in January and I said it's almost there. It turned out it took until November until we actually um, got it fully operational, but you can, you know, now if you're a user, you can add the um, Flatback remote for the Fedora repository. There's a sort of standard one and then the testing one which adds um, so basically the versions, testing versions of applications which are in updates testing that developer, where developers push them before they've been gone stable. You don't need both, you can have one or the other. Um, and so do we have a lot of flat packs? Well, uh, to be honest, no. There are three in the repository right now. Um, I, we did, um, so we're trying to jumpstart that a little bit and we had a um, hack fest um, this, um, this week in the Reddit office to just sort of sit down for a couple hours and try to turn out some more. And I think that there are, I know of at least 14 which are almost ready to, um, to, to push out to the repository that could be built, built right now. So hopefully I'll, I'll be, at least I'll say that three is 20 or 30 within a week or so. Um, but you know, clearly that's still a small number. If you look at FlatHub, as I said, there's about 450 there. So, you know, but the good thing is that it's not like we're losing the race here because Fedora users get both of these. It's not that they get either the, the, the ones from Fedora or the ones from FlatHub, but they actually um, can get the intersection of what's on either one. And that's, I, I think, an important thing to understand about the um, Flatpak ecosystem is it's not built around the idea of a single app store. Like, it has to be in the app store to be available. Instead, you can have any number of um, remotes of sources for Flatpaks um, enabled on your system, and they're all information from all those remotes is downloaded and combined. So e either on the command line or in GNOME software, you see both sets of applications. So um, I want to talk a little bit about the view for a Fedora Packager. There are some tools to um, create a template for your Flatpak to build it locally, and then once you have it building locally, you can uh, build it then in Koji. And I'll um, do a very, very simple demo of this. Um, so, so the first thing we're going to do is demo, we're going to use um, the RPM to Flatpak thing to tool to create a template here. And I'm going to do a shortcut is that the RPM to Flatpak tools knows that if can go out and look on FlatHub and say, this app is already on FlatHub, let me use that as a template to help figure out what all the sandboxing options I need are and some of the other things that you know would have to be added manually otherwise. So that's going to look at the set of RPMs in the Fedora repositories and the and look on FlatHub for something called quad repository and then go ahead and write out the metadata files you need. Okay, so, so this, is, this one is the module metadata file, and it's actually really very small. There's, some, the stuff, there's like a description here which comes from the spec file. This stuff is just um, basically boilerplate saying that it uses the Flatpak runtime module. And then there's a single RPM in this one, just the application itself. And it says, this by default is saying pull the Fedora 29 branch of Quadrapostle. The other file that you have says, after you build it, how do you make it into a flat pack? And 
um, there's this option here saying that it can use was access to X and X11 and Wayland and audio and deconf. <coughs> and you know, you can do this, you know, if you didn't have the uh, FlatHub shortcut, you'd have to create this by hand, and there's some examples in the docs. But um, the um, having it be able to pull it from FlatHub makes it even a little faster. So then I can do flatpack module, pull build, dash install. And that's how you, um, oops, doesn't look like Modularity expects you to build a directory name the same as your module. Uh, okay, that should work better. Um, so I'm gonna now go back to my presentation because that will take some minutes to complete. And um, this, there is a tutorial on, web, on the web that um, goes through all of this and also has more detailed information about what goes into your container.yaml and, and so forth. Um, okay. So is it easy to do this or hard to do this? It really depends upon how many libraries you need to bundle. If you just have not bundle any like I just showed you, it's easy. If you have to bundle many, many libraries, then one of them is not going to rebuild properly or something's going to go wrong and you might spend a long time trying to get your thing to a flatback. So what we're doing to address this is we have a flatback common module which has um, pre-built things relocated into slash app that can be just pulled into a flatback and bundled without having to rebuild them from a source. And that, the idea there is to make it easy. Um, and this is sort of showing what the fact is. This is um, listing the thousand applications that are in Fedora, how many things you'd have to bundle to make a flatback out of them. And the green stuff at the bottom here is ones that don't have to bundle anything. And that little pink thing at the top is application where you have to bundle more than 100 libraries. Um, and you know, that's like not gonna work. Um, so, and over here we're showing is as we add more things to GNOME Common, how does it become easier? So you can see that you, this is currently GNOME Common, and we made, um, you know, we've gone from 400 to 500, which are pretty much in the easy category. Um, <coughs> So that's like, you know, that, that helps the packager there. You know, there's like, okay, low hanging fruit for the future is adding KDE libraries and Perl to it. That would add a, a lot more applications there that I think a lot of things that are sort of pink have like using like KDE and Perl and then they get a ton of libraries you have to bundle. Um, so what's going, on, what's going on in the future? For Fedora 30, we're looking at some improvements to GNOME software to display um, permissions better and also handle um, better when there are applications between sources. If you have an application in both FlatHub and in the Fedora repositories, showing a very sensible user interface that defaults to, to installing one of them, and then maybe you can select the other one if you want to. Um, we're looking for improvements for packagers to make Flatpak common better, bigger, to make it easy, less things you have to install, make um, local builds faster, make any errors easy to understand, um, and um, one important thing is going to be automatic rebuilds. So to be able to, um, if, if uh, somebody updates a package in Fedora, say, ah, this package is bundled into these three flat packs, automatically rebuild the flat packs, and then say, tell the maintainer, look, we built a new version of your flat pack. Why don't you test it out, make sure it works, and then you can submit the update. So that, that's a goal. It um, requires some new services running on Fedora infrastructure, so it's a little bit, you know, some civil work getting there, but that's probably the next thing we have to tackle for um, working on um, flatbacks in Fedora. Another thing that um, we want to work on is extensions. Um, so the idea of an extension is a part of the flatback ecosystem, which I didn't really show in my initial picture, is that an extension is a a set of code, that can, set of files, that can be added to a flatback or a runtime to add na new capabilities. Um, it could be themes, I mean, codex is an important part, we add new um, media codex, application plugins, sometimes you want to split off the language support for an application to a, into a separate extension. If you think about LibreOffice, including all the spelling dictionaries for every language makes for a very big, um, a very big, um, Flatback to download. If you can download only the what you need for your current language, it makes it a much smaller download. 
Um, so we don't currently have support for building those within the Fedora container build system, but that's something we can tackle in the future to really make it the story complete. Um, so further in the future, some things we would like to do um, is to look at signature support. Um, currently, when you, you're installing from the Fedora, for the Fedora registry, you get a, it's an index which has cryptographic hashes of all the um, Flatpaks to install, and those are checked. And you know, so there's, um, and the, the index is over HTTPS and delighted directly from Fedora. So you have some level of safety there, but having cryptographic signatures on the Flatpaks would give more flexibility and more uh, resilience against tampering. Eventually, we might want to move to be able to skip the RPM step there and be able to build a flat pack directly from source in Fedora. I think that's something generally we're looking at in Fedora is saying, you know, do we need spec files? Do we need to go tar tarball the spec file to the final result? Or can we make things simpler for packagers? So eventually, you know, once we get some momentum there, I think we might want to look at how we can go directly from source but within the Fedora infrastructure. But that's not something that that's not the initial step, that's a, a future step once we have um, things going. So let's see if the, um, see how the, okay, so it um, built it all, then I had to install, so then it installed it, and it should be installed now. So I roll Quadra Apostle, and there I have the GNOME Tetris version. So. It's not Tetris, no trademarks. Okay, the GNOME <laughs> Russian game of falling blocks. <laughs> not, which is not Tetris. <laughs> um, so that's, um, so, that's so, so in that case, was the, it was the simplest case of creating a flatback in Fedora. I did not have to edit a single line of the files so that were they were all created by RPM to flatpak um, fully correctly. So. And, that, and you know, there's probably our, our several a hundred or more applications that are going to be that simple, and then some which will take more work. So let's go. Yeah. So I guess I can take questions now. So did I edit the spec file to do that, or how did it? So. So how, how did it? How did it know? How, how did it know how to do everything to just make it work? Um, so so when it, it's, it's so when the the um, RPM to Flatpak said okay, there's a quarter puzzle RPM there. Um, it doesn't have any requirements that are not in the runtime. So let's create a module that just lists that that one um, spec file. Then it built it in an environment where the um, the RPM macros were changed. So like binder was no longer user bin, it was app bin. And where the standard percent configure macro that you use when configuring a, configuring in a spec file go past, past um, dash dash prefix equals slash app to auto make. And then that, that um, so that, so it automatically moved everything over to, to um, change it to slash app. And usually when things fail is because the spec file hard coded slash user somewhere in the uh, its instructions, and then you have to go out and fix the spec file. Which should be fixed anyways. Yeah, so these are things that, you know, yeah, usually these are fix, fixes that are just making things conform better to the Fedora packaging guidelines. Yes? What about the underlying runtime? Is that? So, that is a Fedora runtime now. It's a Fedora, that's, a, that's using a Fedora runtime, which is basically also generated in the Fedora can build system. It basically just, um, I mean, basically, just installs a whole lot of lots of Fedora packages, um, which are defined in a module two, and then builds a container out of them. So, so that so right now, that's a runtime that's only a runtime and not an SDK. So it means that you can't compile against it. You can only um, you can only run application which these type of applications are generated from Fedora RPMs against it. We in the future might also generate an SDK from there. Okay, well, thank you. Well, yeah? Uh, if there is a better in the future SDK for Fedora runtime, yeah. what would be the alternatives to uh, using this runtime for the parties compared to other runtimes for the previous runtime, for example? Okay, so, I mean, I think using the Fedora one. Just repeat the question. 
Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The question was, what was what would be the advantage of using the um, a Fedora SDK in runtime over using the free desktop runtime? Well, I mean, I think that the advantages of using a Fedora SDK aren't completely clear. But if we were to also generate, say, the CentOS SDK, then you could say, okay, this is going to be maintained with security fixes over a uh, you know five year, seven year um, lifetime, which could give you a you know, something that for, for an application they want to be stable could be an advantage there. Um, you know, I mean, it all, you know, that would, i say, be the main thing. It's just um, knowing that it's maintained in the, with, with the maintenance of the underlying distribution. So whatever Fedora gives you, you know, or whatever, um, you know, whatever, whatever CentOS gives you or whatever you're sourcing from would have, would carry over to the SDK. I mean, also you would get the security updates from the distribution in the SDK. In the runtime. Yeah. One more question. I'm not sure if it's related, but if I understand correctly, you can now install like one application from different sources, like RPM and <coughs> different sources from Flatpak. Yeah. And is there any plan like to distinguish for the user from the show perspective, like what version is he running? Or so, uh, so the question was if the uh, if Flutter Puzzle is available from both as an RPM in Fedora and a Flatpak in Fedora and a Flatpak on FlatHub, what's the experience for the user there? Um, and then, you know, so you only can have one installed and active at the same time. Uh, that's basically because the, you know, it doesn't really make sense to the user if there's like three different quadrupuzzle icons and with all the same name and same icon showing up in your, your application launcher. Um, but, you know, the goal, which is what we're working on for the next version of uh, GNOME software, is that you could go to GNOME software, click, look at Quadro Hustle there, and, and, and install applications, see that, oh, I have the Fedora Flatback installed, change that and say, I want to install the FlatHub one instead, and, and, and then switch, switch it over that way. So it's something that is available to the user, but it's not like you can have um, the choice of running one or the other at, at um, when you launch the application. The other thing that prevents that is actually just the, the launch link. If, yeah. you, if you started directly via Flatpak, yeah. you, you, could, you could have more uh, start than one. Yeah, I don't, don't think Flatpak will allow you to have two things with the same application ID installed at the same time, but I'm not even sure about that. If they, yeah, but um, maybe if they're different branches you can, but you're right that it's basically the application, the desktop file is the, the thing that limits it to only having one exposed to the operating system. Okay, well, thank you everybody.